Okay, so thank you um, once again for joining us. Um, we're absolutely delighted to have you join for this uh, second um, session of the day. Um, and we're very much looking forward to supporting you with um, session A, decision support for campaign integration. So we'd like to open with a few housekeeping notes before handing over to Dr. Turner. So um, please be aware that the sessions will be recorded and you'll be able to view the recordings post-event by the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition website. We'd like to encourage interaction. So again, please use the social media channels to promote and engage a wide audience this event by tagging at HCE Coalition and using the hashtag collaborative action hashtag. Thank you. Um, during today's session, please could we ask you to add your questions to the Zoom Q&A, which can be found at the bottom of the Zoom uh, screen. And you'll be able to see the questions that have been posted um, to upvote and also add additional comments. And we'll aim to answer as many questions as possible during the sessions. And finally, the MIT team are here to help you with any technical difficulties. So please use the chat facility on Zoom or email the team at events at mit.uk.com. And I'm now delighted to hand over to Dr. Terry to welcome you to the session. Thank you. I could just ask you to pop your video on, that'd be wonderful. Okay, um, thank you, everybody. And uh, I welcome all of us to this uh, breakout session from the plenary. I will appreciate you for choosing to be in this section, which is supposed to look at uh, decision support for campaign integration. Um, our three panelists Dr. Anne Jim Baptist, WHO, Country Office in Nigeria, who's going to talk to us about um, integration across gymnasium platforms. Then Njara from Capital Review Service of Congo Brazzaville. Also a member of the scientific and technical and pastoral committee. We also um, talked to us about bed nets. And the third panelist is uh, Achinta, Dr. Achinta Trivata from Pat India. He's going to talk to us on NTDs and polio. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful set of people that will um, see us through this. And, and at the end of um, this session, which is going to be like 15 minutes or so, um, from the panelists and from the detail I will give about the um, decision guidance toolkits. We'll have an understanding of the toolkits. We're going to understand the pre-planning processes of campaign integration. I'm also going to identify promising practices for pre-planning. Then we'll identify an action which the coalition can take to advance the topic in the next, um, in the next year. So I'm going to share my screen now to give us a little talk on the campaign toolkits, which is a tool developed by the Health uh, Campaign Effective Coalition of the Tax Force for Global Health. It's a BMJ funded uh, organization. And who is it supposed to be for? It's for regional and country level stakeholders and policymakers who oversee, plan, implement, or monitor health campaigns. Um, and also the global organizations that actually fund oversee or issue guidance around health campaigns. And the objective Dr. Of the Terry, oh, just to interrupt quickly, I just think we can't see your new slides at the moment. I don't know if you've shared them. Okay, you can right. just check. <laughs> we can always okay. support you if you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll let you know when you're busy working. Okay. So sorry. Is it okay. showing now? On, yeah, yeah so. I'll present to you. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, as I, I, would, I would give a brief talk on the campaign toolkit, digital um, toolkit, which is a, a, a toolkit developed by the um, Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition of the Tax Force for Global Health. And is, who is it supposed to be for? It's for regional and country level stakeholders and policymakers who oversee, plan, and actually implement uh, campaigns. And global organizations that actually fund, also oversee, coordinate, or issue guidance around health campaigns. And the objectives are just simple. We're supposed to identify opportunities for initiating and continue process, a discussion process on campaign integration, and also provide evidence-based criteria to help country health programs pair which of the um, campaigns they need to pair, then highlight the factors that are potential facilitators and barriers to such combination in such a way that you need to identify which are the uh, barriers that you need to take care of before you think of a um, campaign, looking at it with each country context in place. Then it facilitates the synthesis of global and national guidelines 
standards and criteria to inform campaign integration decisions in each country. So we talk a little bit about campaigns. We're only about campaigns. Campaigns are public health, um, public health campaigns are time-bound activities which um, we deploy to actually address specific challenges. They are done to fill delivery gaps and provide such coverage for health interventions. And um, they are vital um, strategy in providing essential health services in some places. And we use them to respond to disease outbreaks. And um, we all know that campaigns are oft, have often, most times, planned and implemented using the vertical approaches, which has a lot of strain on the limited human resource and financial resources once you continue to do a campaign. So to address this, um, we developed innovations which um, we have de we developed innovation campaign models such as co-delivery or co collaboration between campaign components that have been demonstrated to be more effective and in achieving health goals in comparison to the ones you have to start doing vertical alone. So we look at campaigns and you all know about campaigns. There are components that can actually be coded. Could deliver it. Then even the setup, preparatory activities, the training, logistics, the supplies, waste management, you could, could deliver those on as well. Then in some instances, you could actually implement the campaign together, you could co deliver. Or, or the issues rising after the campaign, so that mop up, waste surveys and, and surveillance, you can co deliver them. So, looking at all you can co deliver, you now have a campaign which will be full integrated, where you have co delivery of all the components. Then you could also have a partial integration where you deliver some components of that um, campaign. So, the, the, the step one of that decision guideline is we have to first determine if it is a viable way to integrate. So we engage leaders to generate that interest. And most times it's good to take the people that can take decision, that's the key decision makers that have authority to approve those uh, integration. And to ensure that everybody's very along, we make sure we reach out to all the broad areas of stakeholders at all the levels. And we encourage individuals and organizations to start to talk. So once they started expressing that interest, then we can start the conversation. I will look for optimal um, settings where this can be brought as an agenda item for immunization. I know the ICC is a common platform where they bring it here. So you take it to that place and start the discussion. That is step one of the, the tool. Then for the step two, it's a matrix which you try to explore the opportunities and identify possible campaign priorities. So we look at all the health domains, immunization, malaria, NTDs, and nutrition. Then look at the intervention that are in those ones. Pair them. Polio, measles, meningitis, yellow fever. So you take all together, take the ones you are thinking of, then you look at the facilitators, look at the barriers to such integration. In that way, you are already moving the discussion to the next level. So this is an example of um, looking at some, um, some, in some integration, trying to pair measles and ITNs. We only have the facilitating factors there that the timing, we must do those campaigns before during the season. Delivery strategies could be given at fixed or um, fixed post or mobile posts. Then the, the intervals, most usually measles campaign, two to three years, the same thing with the ITNs. Then the target group can, the, the geographical target can overlap. Then for the barriers, we know that it is very difficult to coordinate EPI and malaria program together. Then the cold chain for the bird nets, you have a lot of uh, large space for the cold chain. For um, for measles, it is not as bulky as that of uh, nets. Then the target age group are usually different. ITN all ages, measles nine to fifty nine. So there are the things you look at and decide on how to overcome those barriers to to go about with the campaign. The other side have you have the vitamin A and the woman um, the woman selected facilities and barriers. And in the course of this discussion, I'm sure we we'll have discussion. We we'll have. Panelists talking about Bernard, talking about um, across integration across immunizations uh, antigens. Then we we'll also look at the um, NTDs and polio. So the next step is to actually suggest key criteria. So for the first column, you have interventions. These are things that cut across the age range, seasonality, the, the complexity of the intervention. Is it injectable? The cold chain, 
is it directly observe therapy? So you look at all on this side, the place of delivery and mode of delivery. Then you now look at the um, decisions at various level, the local level, the national level, and the global level. So look at the things, you, you look at each criteria, uh, each criteria and you start and find out, is this one going to be a facilitator or a barrier, depending on the head intervention and the country pattern. So this is the next step that we we'll look at before we now decide if we're going to integrate or not. So this is um, just to summarize what I've said. The first of that chat talked about the first one, which is explore. Explore the head intervention from your perspective with your current role. Then the next one is explore and identify the ones you want to pair. Then you zoom in. Once you zoom in, they start to identify the specific facilitators and barriers from the key criteria that you already from. Then the fourth one is the you know, consult your colleagues and start the, um, the discussion. Um, then the step three has a lot of appendices, appendix A, appendix B. And what is what is there that you look at? What are the global guidelines? What are the country guidelines? So policies, then also the local context, what are the issues and challenges? So you plot the interventions against each other. So like for government acceptance of um, integration policy, it's a criterion. What does the global guidelines say on this? And what does the national guidelines say on that? I will have to look at it at the local context. So these are just few that you could look at. Continuation mechanism, financing, financing and funding sources, partner do not support, timing, interval, procurement company. So this one are all in the appendix A of the, of the decision guideline toolkits. Then you have the appendix B of it, which look at specifics. So in this one, you are already um, customizing the whole thing according to global country and local context using more digital technical and operational consideration. So you know things that the, the, the global the policies are saying, like for coverages, what are the objective, what are the coverage objective for most of the things you are doing for polio? We know that we must try to achieve like nine, nine, above 95% coverage. The same thing for measles, meningitis, and yellow fever. So when you look at ITNs, what does the policy say for ITN? It said over 80% coverage, then seasonal malaria chemotherapy was achieved above 95% coverage. So that is for coverage. So you look at seasonality. There are a lot of different that we look at. This is just an abridged version of um, what you have in the tool. The tool has a lot of appendices which you can apparently go through. But in three, four minutes, you cannot say that off, but we we'll try to refer people to look at the tool. It's on the, the website to be, to, be, to be pasted on the chat so people can have a look at it. Then the, the fourth step is to decide whether to pursue integration and eventually move on to collaborative planning and implementation. After careful discussion guided by these toolkits, the programs and their partners will be ready to actually sit down and decide whether the campaign can be integrated or either partially or, or full integration. Then at that stage, the national program and their partners can then begin collaborating on strategy planning to pursue the campaign integration. Thank you. That's, so that's in a nutshell about the um, decision guideline toolkits. Um, I think um, I will stop here and invite my panelists. Like I mentioned earlier, I have three um, strong panelists that cut across all the domain we just mentioned. So I have, um, let me stop my slides showing. Stop sharing, okay, fine. Okay, I've stopped sharing. So um, I have Dr. Anne, John Baptist, WHO Control Office Nigeria, is going to talk to us about integration across the nation um, agenda. Dr. Anne, you know, in 2019, you carried out successful industry coming in Nigeria, um, measles, meningitis, and some cases, yellow fever. As a major stakeholder in those SIs, from your, from your own perspective, what do you think campaign managers and other decision makers see as the main barriers, challenges, <laughs> opportunities to full or partial campaign integration. Dr. Anne. Okay, um, um, good afternoon, Dr. Terry, and good afternoon, dear panelists and uh, all the participants. Um, talking here from Nigeria. So I'll start with a quick background. Um, but before, before then, as a way of introduction, it's, I'm just providing the um, WHO position in terms of integration. Um, integration is one of the six 
um, guiding principle of, uh, sorry, I, my screen is, I mean, okay. Um, it's one of the six guiding principle of the Global Vaccine Action Plan for 2011 to 2022, um, to 2020, sorry. And then when we look at the immunization agenda, um, integration again, it's one of the key strategy that is being recommended by WHO. Um, just again to provide a quick background um, for Nigeria. Um, Nigeria, since we, we did the integrated campaign in 2019, um, when we looked at the MISO case based surveillance at that time, so the um, non polio SIA team did an analysis of the um, outbreaks that the country was um, experiencing. Um, the case based surveillance was set up in 2006 following the the initial catch-up campaign in 2005, where Nigeria um, vaccinated children from nine to 14 years with uh, a measles vaccine, measles vaccine, measles containing vaccine. So at, in 2019, um, we had several outbreaks, especially in the Northern areas, um, Northern state of Nigeria, as you can see, and Bono, one of the state that um, is uh, um, experiencing um, um, humanitarian challenges and insurgency, um, has been recording several outbreaks at that time. In terms of meningitis, the country has made significant progress um, in the control of meningitis. Um, an initial catch-up campaign, uh, mass vaccination campaign for meningitis, is not catch-up, but mass vaccination, were conducted in 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2004. It was a phase-based approach based on the um, risk from different states or district. Um, in 2017, the country also experienced a large um, meningitis outbreak in the northern, northern area of the country. So there was a justification to have both meso and meningitis campaign. But we, we were experiencing issue about um, counterpart funding. Um, Nigeria is a country that is transitioning from Gavi, so it is expected a certain proportion or contribution from the federal government of Nigeria. Um, at that time, um, the economy was bad and we, the team was facing several challenges um, in that. We started with um, uh, analysis um, looking at um, what has been conducted in terms of integration for both MISO um, and meningitis and also our MISO with other antigens um, in Nigeria and in the region. Um, for Nigeria, there was an integration that was done in 2013 and 2014 where the country integrated the MENAFRIVAC, um, so the MEN A uh, mass vaccination with uh, oral polio vaccine in eight um, states, and the coverage was quite good. Similarly, the country integrated in 2014 MEN A and uh, TT containing vaccine, so it's tetanus toxin vaccine, where um, admin coverage were um, equally high. Um, we took the example of Ethiopia in 2015, where they integrated MEN A and uh, and uh, MISO. And uh, to be honest with you, their experience was based on lesson learned from Nigeria. So there was no excuse for Nigeria to not integrate this campaign. Um, we also look at country that has border with Nigeria, Chad and Niger, where they also integrated MISO and MEN A with uh, um, good coverage. So we know that there was some um, hesitancy from other stakeholders um, with the integration. And what again we did was to make this analysis, looking at the risk and the barriers, this is to respond directly to your question, Dr. Oteri, and we proposed some mitigation measures. One of the risks um, or barriers for the integration is the logistic. We know that logistic will need to be more complex. Um, MENAFRIVAC, the MENA vaccine, is a vaccine that was um, designed in a certain way to fit the high burden of meningitis in the African region. Um, and the MENAFRIVAC vaccine is a CTC approved, WHO approved vaccine. CTC is the control temperature, temperature um, chain. So it's, it's a vaccine delivery strategy that allow the vaccine to be stored in temperature of above um, eight degree, but also um, in the environment, it can be managed with up to 40 degree for up to four days. Um, one, another barrier was uh, multiple injections. Um, by integrating, um, especially we were using two injectable, MISO and men, 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 men Afrivac or MEN-A, um, we needed to assure that we have 
effectiveness in core administration. Um, looking at uh, the different WHO recommendation and position paper, we've seen that menafrivac being, being a conjugate vaccine can be administered um, um, similarly or, or, or concurrently with measles vaccine. We also had to increase the number of supervisors, making sure that uh, you know, there was no errors that was uh, done with the team in terms of administration of the multiple um, injection. And of course, while you are um, integrating, you will have to increase the number of days of the campaign. So the campaign went from five to eight days. Um, in some area, we even had to increase it up to 10 days and it saved time for the beneficiaries. So um, the caregivers didn't have to go to vaccinate for miso and come back um, for another time for meningitis. Everything was available at the same spot and at the same time. Um, we know that uh, from um, different um, um, strategy that was done um, for the integration, there was some report about mixing um, vaccine and diluent. Um, so the team composition was also, we revisit the team composition and we also look at the organization of the vaccination post and I will share a couple of uh, pictures of what um, Nigeria did. The training was um, equally more robust. We increased the number of days and we had a single um, integrated operational guide that addressed all the technical issues that the team may have. So at the end of the integration, there were several advantages. Of course, the operational cost saving. By integrating, we reduce significantly the, the government contribution and it allows us to reach our target. We save, we save um, staff time, minimizing the disruption of routine immunization service. Most of the health workers that participate in campaign, they are the one that usually provide the routine service. By integrating, um, we minimize um, the disruption of the routine service. We had a unified um, communication strategy. Um, instead of having one message for MISO, one different message for MENA at different time, um, the team worked um, with uh, UNICEF and we had a unified um, communication strategy in all the states that were implementing um, the campaign. We know that also in Nigeria, there are several areas that are hard to reach, um, hard to reach community, um, areas that have um, insecurity or, or security challenges, by, um, by doing the integration, we addressed it. We addressed um, the chance of mis-vaccination um, for multiple, for multiple campaigns, and of course the caregivers um, save time. This is some um, action pictures of um, doing the integration, um, how the vaccination site um, was set up. Um, the one in the left, is at the health facility. So we had a quad controller um, that, uh, we had a quad controller, a screener um, that also guide the caregivers and the child to where to get the vaccination. Um, the other picture is um, a temporary post where, you know, we usually use um, church, mosque, uh, um, schools um, to administer the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So we also organize um, the team where uh, miso was administrated in one side and meningitis um, or menafrivac in the other side. In terms of impact for um, the integration, um, Dr. Oteri, if you recall, the result of the post-campaign coverage survey of PCCS was quite impressive, F especially for uh, men A. We were the target for men A, we wanted to achieve the 80% target. Out of the 19 states in 2019 that implemented the, the meningitis um, campaign, only one state, um, Kebi, that didn't reach the target. And even with that, they were quite close at 78.5%. Um, just to know that, just um, for, the, for the participant to understand the context, Kebi has um, a lot of um, issues, especially in terms of their um, health system. So achieving 78% was quite impressive um, during um, looking at the context for that um, particular state. For MISO also, um, we had um, state, for MISO the target is 95%. Um, we have a couple of states that have reached their target, Quada that was uh, experiencing a lot of insecurity at that time. And they were ongo they had an ongoing um, CVDPV2 outbreak. So the polio, the vaccine derived polio outbreak and they managed to pull out um, a coverage of nearly 96%. 
Um, Yobe is a uh, northern state also, um, 95 percent plateau, and the remaining state um, as uh, as which uh, close to their target. One of the objectives of um, supplemental immunization activities or campaign is to reach the zero dose children. In terms of um, zero dose children or children that has not been receiving any measles vaccine, either through routine or campaign, the integration allowed us to reach 83% of the zero um, dose children, which is quite expensive. Although um, we still had 1 million children that were not rich, um, that were still unvaccinated. And uh, for those children, we continue and we plan for uh, an SIA in 2020, um, especially it was um, in uh, two main states, um, Kogi and Niger State. So in conclusion, um, integration, um, it needs to be well calculated, well planned, but um, integration save costs. It's allowed us to um, integrate some of the activity like the field guide, the micro plan, the training, the communication plan, and the post campaign coverage survey. And most importantly, integration allowed us to tackle um, different disease, uh, meso and men A for our case. And uh, this is to achieve epidemic control. Over to you, Dr. Oten. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ann. Um, I think we also need to um, ask the participants, the audience, to type your questions in the chat box so we can take it. Um, we run, we're running really short of time. Um, the next um, presenter is um, Njara, and um, he's going to talk to us about Bednet. We all know the challenges with Bednet integration because of the volume. So, um, Njara, who is with the CRS in Congo? I don't know what factors should managers actually consider before starting discussion on Bednet integration. And what can the global partners do in this regards? Over to you, uh, Njara. Yeah, th thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rotary, and um, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, so uh, to to start, I wanted to say that um, yeah, I don't want I don't have uh, uh, slides, but um, I'll talk verbally and share our experience uh, with you, our perspectives. Um, in in Congo, we we are now uh, as CRS, we we are principal recipient of the Global Fund grant for malaria. So we are supporting the national malaria program to actually. Um, organize uh, many interventions, but including the, the bed nets mass campaign planned for uh, 2022 in the, the middle of the year. So we are we are exactly uh, at an early stage of that the decision making and those discussions about po potential and possible integration. Uh, so uh, I would say one one of the biggest factor for me is is uh, exactly the anticipated timing uh, for our case we are now like 10 months uh, prior to to the bed nets uh, campaign so it's uh, for we think we it's been a great opportunity to actually use the um, uh, to start using the 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 decision guidance tool for campaign integration and have conversations with all the key stakeholders in country about that. So my, my point is the first big factor is the, the timing of the preparation and the time the the preparation and uh, to to also uh, start the discussions with uh, stakeholders. The the second factor I wanted to share is is basically, and I think uh, our colleague from Nigeria talked about that was is exactly uh, government government willingness and also the the possibility of policy integration, and uh, you can actually facilitate those discussions and address those government willingness very at a very early stage inside some coordination mechanisms, not necessarily related to integration directly, but 
those coordination mechanism can be like some, for example, health system strengthening committees or partners, health partners committees, where you can actually bring the subject and bring the question of what's, what's your plan in, in your vertical thinking uh, in your malaria program, but also to bring the possibilities of what are the, what are the other uh, interventions and, and uh, plans that are actually in the pipeline in the country and to address those discussions at an early stage. So in, in, uh, in Congo, uh, where I'm based, actually, I forgot to say that I'm talking to you from Brazzaville. Um, the discussions actually started within the platform of uh, partners, uh, health partners, and the Ministry of Health, where we have few uh, key programs in the country. And that's where, of course, it was a bit boosted also by, the, by us bringing this uh, toolkit, but we did have the opportunity to actually talk uh, and uh, and have and and check the willingness around the table, and uh, thanks to those meetings uh, and thanks to let's say the advocacy action that we could actually bring on the table, we we got some a couple of uh, willingness I would say from the programs to to move forward and. Uh, the, the the third factor was how to actually how to actually uh, move forward from there, and uh, for our case, we we did plan the the, the macro planning. We we didn't get yet to the micro ones, but the macro planning, the national macro planning of the, the campaign, the Bednets campaign, and we decided to actually um, involve uh, significantly first uh, the immunization program we, and with the Ministry of Health in this Bednets uh, macro planning process. And then we, we also involved the decentralized structures of uh, the Ministry of Health, I mean, from the provinces and from the regions and the districts to actually have uh, uh, a good uh, anticipation of the first the complexities uh, and the risks that need to be, risks and barriers that need to be discussed. And we use that, uh, we, we, we are using that macro planning process that started with the discussions first and also data collection. And we're going to end uh, that process with uh, a national workshop uh, at the central level with uh, all those stakeholders to actually detail the, the the macro planning planned for the bed nets campaign but now addressing the the the, the question of integration and uh, discussing all, all, all about all the details around around that and it's it's not about uh, i mean this this decision made already we are thinking of actually using the, the the toolkit to to make some key decisions as well during that uh, macro planning process and and of course we as you, as you know during the macro planning we talk about uh, timing we talk about uh, target population and census uh, household registration talk about supply chain planning you talk about monitoring and um, evaluation of uh, uh, processes of the programs to be uh, to be planned so uh, Th that's that's the that's the macro planning uh, process where we want to move forward uh, on that. The 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 the, the four factor and uh, where I uh, I want to to end also my sharing is uh, exactly about how to about the the, the possibility of not 
you know, uh, fully integrating, but also identifying in which uh, aspects we can have some key uh, collaboration or 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 some partial uh, integration between. Uh, for example, for us, then it's the bednets campaign with the humanization campaigns, where we have we can have some partial integration uh, within the processes to not also have a, a, a too high ambition, and we have some key aspects already on on the list of where we can have some partial integration. The first one is uh, definitely the mi micro planning process even if we don't have a full integration we can consider having where to uh, actually integrate some processes in the micro planning and here again i'm talking about unanticipated uh, unanticipated uh you know uh proposals because we have we have time and that's that's a great advantage to actually anticipate that uh, in advance the the second one is is exactly the household registration or census or popular target population counting where also we can we can save a lot of not only money but also a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time and energies and even qualities can combine efforts to actually have uh, a better quality of that very sensitive process, which is the household registration and counting. And the last aspect also where we are having discussions now is about uh, data and especially about digitized data, where we want to combine efforts on using the same uh, digitized uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, tools. Uh, it can be uh, data collecting systems or uh, data analysis systems, softwares, or the same people uh, around, uh, around, uh, around the country where we can have partial integration between campaigns to not duplicate and of course the the last aspect is around uh, the consideration of the covid context where also we want to we we want to move and evolve our bednets campaign from uh, fixed posts to 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 door to door or mobile approach and there we think that our uh, friends and colleagues in the humanization part are having more experience and more lessons learned in Congo as well. So yeah, that's uh, Dr. Oteri, what I wanted to share today. Uh, and uh, I'm open for questions or discussions. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, uh, Njara. Um, I think, um, Without much wasting time, because we're already really, really running short of time. Um, I will call on Dr. Achinta, who is involved in a study that explores possible integration of mass drug administration for lymphatic fluorosis and STH. So I will just ask him in a very, um, in a brief way, just tell us the enablers and barriers to such integration. Then I'm also aware you've done something on polio with um, polio polio first campaign, so you could equally share the experience your experiences in that light. Then um, you can type your questions. I can see a lot of questions on the on the chats, and I'm sure Dr. Ant is already trying to put some answers together. So, um, Achinta, there's little little or no time, so yeah, just go you. through and let us hear. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Teddy. So very warm welcome to all the panelists and participants. Our study was an explorative research to actually uh, develop a model for potential full integration of lymphatic paralysis and deworming master administration and partial integration of pulse polio campaign. Uh, LF is a very big problem in India and we have got around 40% of the uh, global burden, around 630 million people are at risk and uh, around 
257 districts across 16 states and five, uh, five union territories are endemic. As far as soil transmitted helmets are concerned, uh, 241 million children between the age of 1 to 14 are at risk, which represent 68% uh, children in this group in India and 28% of children in this age group globally. Now, the biggest pillar to uh, eliminate or control these two diseases, diseases are mass drug administration, which comes under two different departments of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The ownership of lymphatic filiasis is with National Vector Bone uh, Disease Control Program and of STH is, is with uh, Child Health Division. Now, integration uh, would give an opportunity if we do an integrated campaign to provide interventions, two interventions in one single visit. The rationale being that the visits to the same households are being made by the same workers working in the same community. Even the beneficiaries of STH, where we give drugs between 1 to 19 years of age, is almost a subset of uh, LM. And the albendazole, which is the cremoprophylacted uh, drug for STH, is already part of the drug regimen of LF. Our research question, the primary one, was to identify enablers and barriers for the integration of these two campaigns. And the secondary question were to formulate a uniform decision of an integrated campaign and enumerate what learnings we can imbibe from Pulse Polio and utilize them in the integrated campaign. So as I said before, this is an exploratory study where uh, interviews of key informant uh, were done. We did the relevant uh, best review of the guidelines and the participant uh, included program officers who had uh, more than three uh, years of campaign experience and partners and field level workers. Uh, the sampling was purposive because we took uh, people from all three campaigns and the interviews were conducted at various levels, right from national level to the field level workers. The interviews were conducted on a semi-structured interview too. In the right, you can see the pie chart where the number of uh, interviews at different levels have been enumerated. Now, this study happened in the state of Delhi and state of Uttar Pradesh. In Uttar Pradesh, the main district where uh, the study was conducted was Lucknow and Unna. Now, the barriers and enablers were very diverse and we got a very a different uh, answers at different levels and they can be basically put together in different thematic areas like contextual programmatic fund related data management monitoring and supervision and supply and logistics if you look at this heat map this chart represents different topics enumerated by the participant the darker uh, the box the larger the number of participants talked about that particular topic. So the issues given are the barriers and uh, the enablers. And it, you can see at different level, uh, the priorities were different. Like in national state level, people were talking more about interdepartmental coordination and human resources and monitoring and supervision, data flow. Whereas at block and village level, people were more concerned with capacity building, or a remuneration to field level workers or to recording and reporting. So we got very different priorities at very different levels. Uh, these barriers and enablers which were enumerated by the participant, in barriers, the main uh, three barriers were recording and reporting, capacity building and remuneration to the FLWs, the field level volunteers. The remuneration to FLWs, were, of course, we got from the field level workers themselves. Recording and reporting and capacity building were the barriers because the, these two campaigns, as the ownership is different, the formats of reporting and recording are different. The capacity building happens on a different modules. So these, the, the participants thought, were major barriers. Then interdepartmental coordination is, again, uh, was a key barrier among the national and the state level participants because these both of these are vertical programs with hardly any convergence, hardly any coordination. The other main barriers which came out to be were supervision, data flow, uh, budgetary issues, monitoring and evaluation. I'm not going to get 
in details of other things. But the uh, the important point which I want to raise here was supply and logistics, which the people at national and state and uh, district level, they thought it as a barrier, whereas uh, many people at block and village level thought supply and logistics to be an enabler. The biggest enablers we found was micro planning and human resources because micro planning is being done for both the campaign. They know how to do it and human resource, the human resource because they've been working in the field, they know what to do and human resources in both the campaigns being very similar. The campaign process itself, public acceptance, though we did not uh, directly talk to the public, but whatever information we got from the people, they thought that public would very easily accept the integrated campaign. The communication, the part of participation, all these were the enablers we got. Uh, the learnings of Pulse Polio campaign, which can be replicated into the integrated campaign, the most important one was a dedicated mechanism of reviews at all the levels. Right now, in NTD especially, it's more of a piggyback review. It is being done with some other programs. So a dedicated mechanism would help a daily evening briefing meetings between the field level workers, the supervisors, and the medical officers would definitely improve the quality of the program. A robust monitoring and evaluation, continued advocacy by influencers. And by influencers, I mean at every level, right from global partners to a village level influencer can really help. Standardized training and streamlining of the supply chain and logistics can be learnings which we can replicate from the Pulse Polio campaign. Now, when we were talking to the participant, we came to know that uh, the understanding of integration was very different. Many participants said that planning for both the campaigns simultaneously is integration, or some said giving drugs at the same time at the same household is integration. Some, some said that both the uh, teams of both the campaigns working together with integration. So uh, there were very different understanding we felt people had. The challenges we faced were mainly due to COVID where we could not take uh, direct interviews. A lot many interviews were done virtually. Face-to-face -face interviews we had to do with all the safety precautions. Uh, the approvals, the SMR approval, the IRB approval, that took much longer than we expected. And there were very different priorities uh, of people, especially of the government staff, who was very much involved in, uh, in COVID vaccination. So we had to take, you know, do uh, regular communication and coordination to take appointment even for a 45-minute interview. Diverse knowledge of concept of integration, as I said, was very different and we had to, you know, we had to ultimately form a uniform definition. Uh, what was uh, the lesson learned? The most important and single most lesson was there needs to be a very strong political will. This, If there is a strong political will, it will have a trickle down effect and people will at different levels will own the program. Also, there needs to be a very good interdepartmental convergence in, in terms of coordination and in terms of sharing of resources so that integration integrated campaigns can work perfectly then one important lesson we learned was similar campaigns can be integrated together by that i mean a mda campaign can be integrated very easily with the mda campaign because both are basically house to house based it would be very different to integrate an immunization campaign with a uh, let's say mda campaign because a, Immunization campaigns tend to happen uh, on the concept of booth, but uh, FDA campaigns happen at house to house level. Then one strategy may not work in all campaigns in all geographical area. It needs to be tweaked. It needs to combine as per the need. Then it would be very good if we can uh, digitalize the beneficiary less. It can help all the programs in the future and all in the uh, Later on an yearly basis, one needs to only update the beneficiary list rather than make a new beneficiary list. Then whenever we are making a plan, it is very important to take a holistic view from all the cadres as priority is different uh, in, uh, at different cadres. And lastly, campaigns 
must ensure equity and time so these were the lesson learned the after talking to all the participants this is what uh, we came out as a definition for integration integration as for the participant was the process of integrating components of a specific program designed to address a specific disease or health need with another health program and support in maintaining ongoing intervention in a synchronized and harmonious way this would also include bringing in cross cutting opportunities to make the integrated campaign more effective and more efficient uh, in the last slide, I just wanted to say about the promising practices because this was, this is more of a potential integration. So two things which are happening in both the campaigns, one is micro planning, which actually is based on the pulse polio immunization macro planning. It is a very good thing happening and it needs to continue. And the second thing is capacity building, which happens regularly, but we need to have a one single module to. Uh, to uh, train uh, the workers and it should have it should be done on one platform the training also needs to be more interactive as as it happens in pulse body so this is all i wanted to talk to you about thank you very much yeah thank you so much uh, uh, dr chinta um uh, unfortunately we have issue with time so um we cannot take questions and answer but um, the discussion can still continue post um, this event, but I can see a lot of questions and Dr. Anna has actually attempted to answer some of the questions that pertain to her. So maybe, Jara, you will look through and see the question that was actually asked, but one was basically on what part of the toolkit was much useful to you, so you can look at it and throw some answers later on. So um, I need to thank everybody, both the attendees, the panelists for this time, because now we have to have to hand over to the team so that they can take it further because we have barely have time for any question right now. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Otto. I'm so sorry that we've run out of time. Um, but I just wanted to um, just give everybody a quick update on our next session. So we've got session D, experiences in campaign integration, session E, geospatial data solutions for improved health campaign efficiency and effectiveness and Session F campaign integration with PHC systems. So once again, just pop back to the platform, go to the homepage, click on the program tab to choose your session and then join the meeting. Um, they will start literally in about seven minutes. So you've got a little bit of a chance of a quick break and then we'll see you in the next sessions. Thank you once again to all of our speakers and to Dr. Terry today. Thank you.